Hello and welcome to the History of Babylon 5. Today's episode we're going to cover the Soul Hunters and the Keeper. Most of this will be canon, but we will dip a little bit into some non-canon sources such as the novels and whatnot. And here we go. The Soul Hunters are a sentient race that collects the souls of the dead in order to preserve them. Their lifespan is unknown, but very long lived. 4,000 Earth years is considered young. The Soul Hunters are capable of sensing the time when a being is about to die, and are drawn to this moment in order to capture the soul of an individual. These people are not ordinary people, but special ones. The artists, poets, and leaders of their race, whose achievements are too important to lose. Soul hunters capture souls because they believe that once a person dies, their existence ends. There is no heaven or great realm where all souls of the deceased reside. To them, all that a person is, and all they will ever become, ends when the body dies. As such, soul hunters believe that it is their duty to preserve those souls of those important individuals. They deny themselves this gift and do not preserve their own souls. The Mimbari find this practice of capturing souls abhorrent due to their belief in reincarnation. The Mimbari believe that removing the souls from the cycle of reincarnation diminishes them as a race. Soul Hunter's abilities include sensing the passing of a being, inducing unconsciousness, and empathically learning the language of another race quickly. They are also an extremely long-lived species who live for thousands of years. In the distant past, the soul hunters sensed the passing of not an individual, but an entire species on the distant planet of Ralga. This was the greatest accomplishment of the soul hunters, who sent dozens of their orders to claim the souls of an entire species, and placed it within a large spherical vessel, where it was stored within the Whisper Gallery. They would not know, though, that the souls they collected were not dying, but evolving, and the act of capturing their souls would drive the species mad. One of the most noted moments that involved the Soul Hunters was the beginning of the Earth-Mimbari War, when the Mimbari leader Dukat was killed when his ship met the humans. Sensing the opportunity to preserve a powerful soul, a soul hunter attempted to take the soul of Dukat, but failed as the Mimbari had a wall of their warriors protecting the Mimbari leader. This was one of the few moments of a soul hunter's failure to accomplish his task, and the act drove him mad. And we'll be right back with the Keeper after this. A Keeper is a creature genetically modified by the shadows to be used by the Drak to control individuals from other races. Newborn keepers are spawned from a device called a Technonest, a process that leaves the parent keeper reduced to a shriveled blackened husk. Born with a high degree of self-awareness but with no sense of being or purpose, a keeper is immediately bonded to a drach. Driven only by instinct, it digs its still short and stubby tentacles into the specialized nursing pouches on the Drock's chest, and becomes a part of the Drock entity as a whole. Though it will always remain especially responsive to individual Drocks to which it bonds, once bonded to a Drock, the keeper quickly matures and an exceptional specimen can become fully grown in as little as three days and ready to be implanted into a thrall. The skin of the keeper is covered with microfibers that dig into the victim's skin and hook it into their neural system. The creature itself is built like a series of synaptic relays that can cut into the neural pathways and override them, and the longer that they stay attached to a host, the more microfibers it grows, and the greater its ability to control becomes. So its control over a given host grows as it does. The keeper cannot be completely removed from its host, 
while both it and its drug controller are alive. And even if most of it somehow is destroyed or excised, it will quickly regenerate. It can, however, be incapacitated if the host consumes enough alcohol due to its symbolic nature. A keeper can choose to disengage itself from its host, but it is a lengthy process and is usually lethal to the host. Known sightings. In 2260, the Drock attached a keeper to Captain Jack in an attempt to kill Number One, the leader of the Martian resistance during the Earth Civil War. The keeper was placed there as part of Clark's administration pact with Mr. Morden and his associates. Though by the time it was discovered, the shadows had already left for the rim, so it appears as if the Drock were attempting to continue their relationship with Earth in their master's absence. Around the same time, the Drock began to influence the Centauri by attaching a keeper to Regent Milo Verini, allowing them to influence his actions as part of their long-term plan of retaliation against the actions of Londo Malari and the Centauri Republic took when they executed Morden and his two Shadow Associates and destroyed the Shadow Base on the island of Cellini. In 2278, David Sheridan II had a keeper attach itself to him from an ancient urn from Londo Malari, who was under Drock control by means of another keeper. Sheridan headed for Centauri Prime in order to lure his parents into following him there. And we'll be right back after this. Despite a plea from Michael Garibaldi not to rush off to Centauri Prime, both of Sheridan's parents went anyways, and they were both captured by the Centauri. Garibaldi went to Babylon 5, where he was able to learn from Viracato that the Drock had been captured, that the Drock had been on Centauri Prime for quite some time, and that they were in control of the Emperor and the Prime Minister. Malari was ordered by the Drock to have David's parents killed. However, he arranged for their escape after drinking enough to gain a few minutes of freedom from his Keeper's influence. Upon returning to Membar, David Sheridan II was examined by Dr. Stephen Franklin. Franklin figured out that the only way to remove the Keeper without killing Sheridan would be to kill the Drock that spawned the Keeper. Viracato and Garibaldi returned to Centauri Prime and found the Drock who had spawned the Keeper. Veer killed the Drock, which in turn also killed the Keeper. Thank you for watching the history of Babylon 5. Special thanks to the Babylon Project for all information you heard today. Very special thanks to the contributors of the Babylon Project. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. For those who have, thank you very much. And have a nice day. Bye-bye. If there is anything in particular you would like me to cover on Babylon 5, Go ahead and put it down in the comment section below. I read most of every comment that you put, and most of them are very nice. Thank you. Upcoming episodes I got kind of planned out will be covering David Sheridan II, which will be all non-canon. Also, we'll be covering the Earth Alliance Civil War, Viracato, probably Milo. He was pretty cool. Uh, Londo... Uh, but that might be in a little bit. That's going to take a while. Stephen Franklin's another one. We also got the Grey Council and the Mimbari caste system. Babylon 5 itself, the station. The Dilgar War. Oh, we did that already. Jump Gates. All Narn ships. Centauri ships. Mimbari ships. The Techno Mages. But I will take requests. And if you'd like to support the channel, as I tell people who ask, please share the video. That's the best way. But if you'd like something back, too, uh, I've got an Amazon store with a lot of sci-fi related stuff on it, including Babylon 5. Anything you buy from the store, I get a kickback from, which would also help support the channel, and you get stuff, too. Anyways, thanks again for watching. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.